What is up guys, Fahir here from awesomedudes.com and one of the issues I see students have is understanding object-oriented programming in Unity and how to use it. Why am I saying in Unity? Because object-oriented programming principles are the same even if you're creating a mobile app or a desktop app and also if you're creating a Unity game. We're using C Sharp to program, we have classes, we have objects, we have variables, the principles are the same, but how can we combine that with Unity's get component or game object, find game object with tag or simply find game object with the given name? What happens behind the scene and what is referencing what and how does that work in Unity? Because of that, I've created this video where I'm gonna visually explain everything to you so that that topic is over and finished for you once and for all. So let's get started by me moving away from the frame. Now that I'm out of your way, let's see what object-oriented programming is and how does that work. And we're gonna start with classes. And if you try to learn object-oriented programming or heard that term before, you heard also a term called class because that starts with a class. And you probably heard that classes are blueprints for creating objects. What does that mean? You model a class, and how you want it to look like, and then you create objects from that class. And later on, you use objects in your program, or in our case, in the game, and that's how we make things work. To demonstrate this with a picture, we can say that the class is a blueprint for creating cars. So we have a blueprint for creating a car, and that blueprint stays there, we follow it to create a car, but does, that does not mean that we can only create one car from that blueprint. We can create multiple cars. So you can create one car, second car, third car, and all that came from that single blueprint. So now how can we transfer that to our game? Well, I always like to start with a simple class that I'm gonna call warrior. And we have some basic variables like public int, health, int, damage or attack damage and we have two functions one is attack with axe and another one is take damage obviously with one we're going to attack with another one we're going to take damage we also have two constructors now what are constructors when it comes to a class well as i said classes are blueprints for creating objects in order to create objects, we use constructors. So in order to create this warrior or create an object from the warrior class, we will type warrior is equal to new warrior. That means that we have created an object type of warrior from the class warrior. So we created an object by using the new keyword as you can see on line nine. So now that we have an object, from that class, we can use the methods that we declared in the class itself, like attack with axe and take damage, and we can call those methods by using the name of the variable, in our case, warrior, with lowercase w, dot, and then the name of the function we wanna call, in this case, attack with axe. And of course, in our game, that will look pretty. We attack with the axe, we see blood everywhere, so on and so forth. But we also have another constructor with a parameter integer, which, which is called init health. And inside of that constructor, I've typed health is equal to init health on line 16. That means that we're setting the health variable declared on line seven to be equal to the value that we pass as a parameter inside of line 15. So if we create a new class or a new object from this class with a parameter, we will type warrior is equal to new warrior. And for example, we set the value 20. And that value 20 will be applied to the health value that we declared on line seven. So now if we use something like warrior.health, that means that we will display number 20 in the console if we print that. If we type take damage and we pass 10 as a parameter, that means we would take 10 damage for our warrior. 
Now, what actually happens behind the scene when we create a new object from a class, when we type warrior is equal to new warrior, actually what happens is that inside of our memory in the computer, we allocate a space and the warrior variable, so the warrior with a lowercase w declared on line nine is actually a pointer to that space in memory. So it actually points to the space in memory. What does that mean? That means if, for example, if we create two objects, two warriors from the same class, one we call warrior and another we will call second warrior. We declare them or we create them by using the new keyword. And for both now, we can use the functions we have declared in the warrior class, such as attack with axe. And they both attack with the axe, but they are separate. There are two characters, there are two objects. What happens behind the scene is that we allocated two spaces in memory, one for the warrior, with lowercase w and another one for the second warrior. So they are both pointing at two separate directions, even though they are created from the same class. This is what I meant when I said the blueprint, which means we can create multiple cars. In this case, we can create multiple warriors from that single class. And it works the same even if we have a parameter. So even if we have parameter in both, let's say we create a warrior with parameter 30, and we cr create another warrior, second warrior that is, with parameter 50, that means we have two separate objects, two separate spots in memory, and with warrior, lowercase warrior, we're pointing at one spot, and second warrior, we're pointing at the second spot. And the first one has 30 value for the health, and the second one has 50 value for the health. If we get attacked, if the first warrior is being attacked and he gets or is dealt with 10 damage, that means he is left with 20 damage. And if the second warrior is attacked with the same amount, 10 damage, he will be left with 40 health. So he received 10 damage, he now has 40 health left in comparison to the first one who has 20 health left. Now, there, why is this important? Well, now what we can do is that we can create a warrior class or a warrior object. So we can type warrior is equal to new warrior and we set the health to be equal to 20. If we debug that value, we will see 20 being displayed. But if we create a second warrior and we call it second warrior and we set it to be equal to the first warrior, so not new warrior, but the first warrior as we are doing on line 14, and if we type the health now is equal to 30, and if we debug log both of those values, so if we type warrior.health and second warrior.health, the value will be 30 for both. Why? Because now two same variables, they both point at the same spot in memory. So with the line nine, we created and allocated a new spot in memory and the warrior variable is pointing to that spot in memory. And on line 14, we created a second warrior, but we set it to be equal to warrior, which means it is pointing to that same spot in memory. So these two variables are referencing the same game object, which now means that if we apply damage to them, let's say we apply 10 damage to the warrior, the health value will now be equal to 10. Same as for the second warrior, because they share the same value, they share the same variables. Now they are pointing at the same spot in memory. This is what's happening. And how does this relate with Unity? Well, these same principles apply in Unity as well, but with a small difference. If, for example, we have a rigid body 2D attached on a game object and we want to get a reference to it because we want to use it to move our game object left and right by applying force to the rigid body, in Unity, we're not going to type private rigid body 
my body is equal to new rigid body 2D in order to get a reference to that rigid body 2D. Because again, these objects are being referenced by our variables because they are a spot in memory as we already mentioned a moment ago. But in Unity, we're simply going to type my body is equal to get component and pass the rigid body 2D component we want to get. And how can you think of it now in terms of object oriented programming? Well, you can think of that rigid body component that is attached on the game object as an object that is created in memory. It is allocated in memory. And now simply we are using my body and referencing that object or that spot in memory by using get component and passing the rigid body 2D, which is the component we want to get. Same as we see on line 11. If, for example, we type or create a private rigid body 2D, named it my body, on line 11, we use get component to reference that in memory. And now we create a new rigid body. Let's name it second rigid body. And we type it's equal to my body. They are now referencing the same component. They are pointing at the same spot in memory. So same spot in memory is being referenced. And let's pretend or let's say, for example, that we have a player health script to demonstrate how or why is this important when I say they both reference a same spot in memory. Let's say we have a player health script and from one script, we get a reference to the player health and we say player health is equal to game object find the game object with the tag player, get component player health because player health is a script. And if we say player health that deal damage 10, that will apply 10 damage to the player. But let's say at the same time, we have another script and we get the same reference. So we have player health and we type player health is equal to game object, find the game object with the tag player, get component player health, but here we deal damage 30. Now they both are referencing the same player health script. So in the first example, when we got that component, we are now referencing with the player health variable, the player health component in memory. This is the same thing we are doing in our other script. So in the first script, now we apply 10 damage. In the second script, we apply 30 damage. In total, we have applied 40 damage to the player. This is why when you see me create a game where we have a lot of enemies and for example, we have 10 enemies and they all attack the player, but they all use in their code or in the script that will deal damage. We use get component player health in all tens of those, which means all 10 scripts are referencing one same script in the memory. So when we apply damage from all 10, let's say we apply damage from one, 10, another, we apply 20, another 30. That's in total 50 or actually 60 damage that we applied. Same as we see in our example right here. So when we apply 10 damage in one and 30 damage in another, in total, we have applied 40 damage because we are referencing the same script in memory. So this is the same one object and we are referencing that from two different places. Now, going back to our rigid body example, it applies to everything, not only rigid body. If we say, for example, game object player, and we want to get a reference to the player, we would use game object, find the game object with the tag player. So now we are referencing our player from one script. If we type this same code in another script, we are referencing the same object because again, it's the same memory allocation in the spot and same functionality, so on and so forth. So if we go in another script and reference the player, and now we try to use his transform, we are using the transform on the same player as the other script. So if you try to move the player from one script and you try to move the player from the other script, you're applying actually the, those values you're applying to the same game object or the same object allocated in memory. So I hope that this 
clears things a little bit up in how object-oriented programming works with Unity and how everything is constructed because in Unity we don't use game object is equal to new game object in order to reference other game objects or to reference those spots in memory and use their scripts that are attached to them so on and so forth as we just demonstrated. So using get component we're actually getting a reference to that component such as rigid body or collider or audio source using game object find we will get that game object with a specified tag name or a specified name we will get it in the scene and even if we do that in three different scripts but we are referencing the same game object that means we have a reference to that one single game object if we apply damage from all three scripts the total damage will be deducted or reduced from that one game object. So this, I hope, will clear things up on how object-oriented programming works in Unity and what is now get component, what is game object find, and how that works behind the scenes. Let me just quickly get back in the frame. And here I am and hopefully you like this video and that it cleared up some of the confusion that you might had or have with object-oriented programming in Unity and now that you can understand things a little bit better how they work behind the scenes and how everything communicates now with each other in Unity. Fahir here from awesometoots.com you can download free assets link is in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care